I'm Brian Westbrook at the Geekwire Studios. My guest now is Mike Thompson, Manager of Global Cloud Product and Business for AMD. Mike, great to see you again. Hey, Brian. Nice to talk to you again. Thanks for having me back. You got it. Now we're talking about reInvent. What were the highlights of the show for AMD? You know, it was a really, really good show this year. It was very good for AMD. Um, personally, my favorite highlights of the show were the customer collaboration where we had Netflix, Pixar, and Pinterest join us for our onstage sessions. So that was really, really exciting. And the Netflix, uh, the Pixar content was beautiful. Uh, we talked about modernization at scale, optimized migration, and AI on AMD. So that was really good. And in general, we had great engagements with our customers and our partners with over 140 productive meetings, which when I looked at that metric in retrospect, I kind of understand why everyone feels so tired at the end of the week of reInvent because everybody's there and you can have conversations with them all. That really helped us tee up our 2025 planning. And so that was really good. And then the other highlight that we noticed is that there is a growing awareness that AI solutions really need a portfolio of technologies to do AI soup to nuts. And we're seeing a significant pull for AMD's AI solutions. But then our main message, processor choice matters, choose sensibly, resonated really well across our customers and our partners. And the notion there is that by choosing AMD processors, you can optimize up to 45% of your general IT OPEX overhead and then take those savings and shift them into value generation, into new novel applications like generative AI or business growth simply by choosing your instance types wisely. The fun stuff, if you will. And you mentioned the conference being in person. Nothing can replace the connections that we can make when we can get together. That's absolutely fantastic. I know there was a lot of conversation on the AMD side, as you mentioned, about how it's not just AI solutions in a silo, but working together as a portfolio. Could you peel back a little bit, give us a little more information on why AI solutions need a portfolio of technologies? I'd love to peel the onion there a little bit. And so one of the things that I notice in the markets these days is there's something of a myth out there that AI is only GPU. And I think some of that comes because AI has made a lot of headlines over the last year. GPUs are famous for supporting AI and have generated a lot of wealth for the people working at these GPU companies. And so they're sort of the shiny new toy. And GPUs are certainly necessary for AI. Uh, but there's other applications where other kinds of technologies are really needed. AI is more than just GPUs. Uh, you need GPU compute, of course. There's also general purpose compute, uh, networking technology that goes into making sure that the data is where it is, where it needs to be, when it needs to be there, as well as customizable acceleration. And AMD has products in our portfolio that cover all of those aspects from the Instinct GPUs for GPU compute to our Epic CPUs, which are great data center processors, to networking products, which are usually under the hood, as well as customizable acceleration through the FPGAs that we acquired through Xilinx. And having that portfolio helps customers solve some of the challenges they're seeing. A lot of customers bring challenges to us about GPU access. Um, they're not necessarily available in all the regions around the world where they want to run them. And sometimes getting guaranteed access to them can mean signing up for multiple years of promise spend, which can create its own set of challenges. Well, the good news is that CPU inference makes sense for a wide range of applications, and they're ubiquitously available. Uh, CPU inference makes sense for small and medium models as well as for applications that aren't really running real time, like having a user hanging off them, interacting with them. For instance, if we had the AI agent joining our call here, Brian, listening to our conversation, five minutes after the meeting, we can get a summary of what we talked about. Well, for an application like that, it makes perfect sense to run them on CPUs, which are more highly available, way less expensive, and can do that inference in the time that's really necessary for a given application. And inference on Epic CPUs, we've got leading performance and cost efficiency. And so we're seeing a lot of hot demand for AMD's AI product portfolio in the public cloud these days. 
lots of great things. One of the things, the new instances powered by this fourth gen AMD Epic CPUs. What is new from AMD and what is next, Mike? Yeah, and so the the newest products that we have from a CPU perspective in AWS are the seventh generation instances from AWS. So 7A, A meaning AMD. Those are our fourth generation Epic CPUs. We like to call them Genoa. And they have an unprecedented performance uplift gen over gen and versus plenty of other compute architectures in AWS. That performance is uplift is so great that it actually creates new and novel kinds of optimization opportunities. And in particular, it enables what I like to call performance driven optimizations. So you can optimize cost and energy efficiency, or you can maximize performance with these processors. But in order to do that, customers have to look beyond the hourly cost of the instances that they're considering because they don't really determine the true TCO or the net job job cost. So in other words, if I compare, I'll compare 6i instances to 7a instances. On average, across a wide range of workloads, you get 2x performance uplift going from 6i to 7a. That means on these latest and greatest AMD powered instances in AWS, you can run faster or smaller. Faster runtime, hence lower cost. Smaller footprints, hence lower cost. Or most importantly, one of the ways it drives the best economic return is running on smaller instance sizes, particularly for applications that are licensed per core, like SQL Server, for instance. With that 2x performance uplift coming to the 7a instances, that means your instance instance size can be cut in half. And since applications like that are licensed per core, it can dramatically drive down the TCO. Um, When I do uh, a cost estimate, using that flow with AWS's bundled SQL Server and instance cost package, it drives the TCO down by 45%. And so that's where customers have to look beyond just hourly cost. And then in terms of what will be new in 2025, I don't have a lot that I can formally announce quite yet, although I would say stay tuned. We we should have some exciting announcements this year across CPUs and GPUs. And Mike, we look forward to those announcements, some great stuff this past year. We look forward to seeing what customers, your customers do with these new and innovative products and how they can leverage them to save their TCO. And then certainly, as we mentioned, bring out the new and exciting innovations. We always look forward to that. Always a pleasure chatting with you. Mike Thompson, he is the manager of global cloud product and business for AMD. Mike, thanks for taking the time. Thanks for having me again, Brian. Talk to you next time. I'm Brian Westbrook with GeekWire Studios. Thanks for watching.